Hi, today I'm going to talk about how I used both my laser cutter and my 3D printer to make this display stand for miniatures. Hi, welcome to Gray Lightning, my video blog about making things and playing games. And one of my hobbies is I like to paint miniatures. And these are some of the members of my Hordes army. And I wanted to do a special display for them. And the original plan for this was all laser cut components. And in fact, still, the black acrylic you see here and these little platforms on the top and the base are all laser cut. But when I cut the acrylic rod for the diff graduated heights here for my stand, no matter what I did, where the cutting occurred, there was a little bit of a slant. And uh, that's really a problem for a display like this because when you glue that to the base, if there's any kind of an angle, the whole thing tilts. And I really tried to fix that, but I couldn't because it's kind of an artifact of how a laser works. So I fell back to another tool in my shop, which is my 3D printer, and in this case, my FDM 3D printer. And it really would be quite simple to do just simple cylinders like this if you wanted to design them. You could do that in Tinkercad on the internet. But I thought as long as I was doing it, I might as well take it up a notch. So I put an ivy design on the columns, and I had to learn how to do sculpting and blender to do that. And I'm going to do a separate video about what I learned there. And the other great thing is it allowed me to select from all the great filaments that are available for FDM. This is a two-color, color-changing filament. It's copper on one side, and it's kind of an iron steel color on the other. And it's really quite beautiful. So I'm going to talk about how I designed the components in the laser cutter. And it's important because that is what gets the whole distribution of these, these columns the way they are. And I'm going to talk a little bit about the 3D printing part of it. And then I'm going to show laser cutting it and assembling it. I often use photos as a reference for a project. And this is a product that's for sale on Amazon. And I used it as my reference. The first layout I did in Illustrator was very similar to that. These shelves are an inch and a half across. I'm engraving both these shelves and the base with circles to show where to put the pillars. I also did a layout of the side view so I could figure out the right heights for each of the pillars. So they range from one inch up to seven inches. I need one of each of those and I need two of the others and I figured out that I could lay them like this. They'll all fit in six eight inch lengths. My plan was to first cut a jig out of wood and then in the same light burn file cut the rods. The rods I bought came in three foot lengths, which is, if I cut them in half, 18 inches. So I ended up with this jig, which is three cutouts of 18 inches long, even though I only need 16 inches out of each. And then the green lines, which are kind of hard to see here, but I have them one inch from each end, so I have waist on each end of the 18 inch rod. And then I use the central 16 inches and I divide it up into the sizes I need. I mapped a pair of those 8 inch lengths into each of these 16 inch lengths. I started out trying to cut 5 8 inch rods and my laser cutter, it's an 80 watt laser cutter, I could not get it to do it. So I backed down to 3 8 inch rods and I ran many tests at different powers and number of passes. I ended up here at 10 millimeters a second, 80% uh, power, and three passes. But even at this, my best setup, I had a slant, and here's why. The laser beam comes to a point at the focal point. In this example, it's on the surface of the material, but then it starts to spread back out. And this isn't an issue if you have thin materials, but the thicker the material, the bigger that slant. And even the smallest slant is a problem for a post, especially when you get out to seven inches long. When I decided to go to 3D printing, I went back to a 5 8 inch pillar. And while I was at it, I made the platforms a little larger. These are an inch and three quarters diameter. And I went to an oval and made it longer. This is 12 inches wide, and I 
have less wasted space in the middle. When it was a circle, it was easy to lay out the posts using the rotation tool, but the oval is a lot more complicated than that. I ended up just putting down some guidelines and centering the circles at the intersections of those guides. I used to lay out cut sheets in Illustrator, but now that I'm more comfortable with light burn, I just bring in something like this shelf and I use the arrange function. I'm gonna use a grid array and I can say how many I want on the X and the Y. And in this way, I can make my cut fit whatever material I'm using at the time. Light burn is wonderful. In Blender, with my 3D modeling, I just did a one inch piece that had a continuous pattern. So that vine enters and exits at the same location. This allows me then to make the different heights of pillars by simply stacking up the ones I need and uniting them. So here's a three inch pillar and you can see it's just a repeat of that section three times. In the slicer, I pulled in the ones I needed. I duplicated the ones I needed two of. I told it to auto arrange and it laid it out in this way, which is the most efficient. This is the beginning of my first print. I'm actually using a tricolor filament here. This is kind of a standard 20% infill, which makes them very light, but they're also very strong. Here it is just finishing up. This print took about 12 hours. These color changing filaments are amazing. Uh, here it is, three different angles on the same finished print, blue, pink, and green. But I also decided to try it in this other filament I had that was copper and gray or steel color. And I auditioned it with the black acrylic and I just thought this looked better. Now for the assembly. The trickiest part about this is making sure that you keep all the vines going the same direction and then eventually making sure that the color orientation is consistent throughout the stand. I'm using a super glue. First, I put the shelf onto each column, making sure that the vine is growing up. I leave the paper on the black acrylic as long as I can because it scratches very easily and it's easy to see scratches. I arrange each of these assemblies on the base and then I orient the colors so that the place where the color meets is in the front. Then I move them off the base. I remove all the paper at this point and then I just methodically go around gluing each of those little assemblies to their circle that's engraved on the base. The ends are very flat. The units are pretty well balanced and this was a simple process. I think the finished display is simple but elegant. Just that slightly larger platform lets me put both the small and medium-sized characters on the display. The staggered heights of the columns allow the weapons to extend beyond the platform. I really love the final result. I have a lot of other great projects for gaming and gamers. If you're interested, please subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications.